I just keep thinking about how it was earlier tonight. It was like such a good night. I'm just like, what's so wrong? Oh, Shekinah, everyone warned you that this was going to end in tears. But it seems like things have blown up more than we could have ever predicted. It's got bad, very, very bad. I, my best. He just wants what he wants and he feels like he might not get it. So he spirals. He ripped out my hair extension. No, Shekinah, no, that's not called spiraling. That's called abuse. Now, before we dive into the nitty gritty of what happened, let's rewind to the start. So the last time we saw these two, they actually seemed to be in an okay kind of place. They were talking about Sarpa's ex and they seemed to get through it. Sarpa was for the first time taking responsibility for the way he'd treated women in the past. But when we join them today, as we're about to see, everything's about to change. Now, the evening starts with the pair of them getting ready to celebrate their joint birthday. Same exact birthday. I know. <laughs> Only there's, there's a slight problem. You see, despite claiming it's both of their birthdays today, the producer asks how that can be. I mean, Sarpa's born on the 21st and Shekinah's born on the 20th. Are you guys feeling okay? Did you miss that lesson in school? Do you not know your dates? That isn't the same birthday. There's a big, big, big point. Time difference. The time difference. It's not born in the same date. We just born in the same moment. Two years apart though. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Born in the same moment, two years apart. Sure, as long as it makes sense for you guys, I guess. Like, in their minds, I'm sure, this is just further proof that they're destined to be together. It must be fate. And as they make their way to the restaurant to meet up with Sarpa's family, we can immediately see that everyone's in celebratory spirits. Everyone's happy, everyone's drinking. It should be a great evening. Only things don't quite pan out that way. You see, practically the moment they sit down, Sarpa's dad, you know, I'm sure you remember, the dad that told Sarpa never ever to trust any woman, immediately starts by asking a difficult question. <laughs> They're asking about our decision to stay in Turkey. Yeah. It might be an uncomfortable topic for them to talk about, but it is a fair question. Now, keep in mind that we were told at the start of the season the reason why Shekinah has been going back and forth is because of their money troubles. Shekinah wasn't able to find work in Turkey. And that, plus of course the fact that Sarpa has been made to give up 80% of his client base, all females, females that Shekinah objected to him giving personal training to, has meant that their financial situation was so bad that she had no option but to go back and forth between the US and Turkey. But everyone's also acutely aware that Shekinah also has other responsibilities. You're going to visit your daughter, obviously. Well, I have to, You'll yeah. go to visit for a short time and you'll go, come back. Yeah, every five weeks for a week. Mm -hmm. There's something in the way that Sarpa's cousin asked that, or should I say stated that as fact, that comes across as a little controlling, doesn't it? That wasn't really a question. You'll visit your daughter for a short time and then you'll come back, she says. Now, perhaps she's saying it that way because that's just what Shekinah's always done. She doesn't yet have any reason to believe otherwise. But for once, Sarpa decides to set the record straight. He explains to his family that actually, we might be moving permanently to America. We've applied for a K-1 visa. And he goes on to explain that if granted, that would mean that we have to get married in the States within 90 days. Now, that news, the news that not only might he be getting married, but he also wouldn't be able to immediately return back to Turkey, even for a holiday or a visit, doesn't go down too well. In fact, his mum's face says it all. I don't know. Yani. He, she says that his mother 
feelings. So I'm please. sure, yeah. Yes, that is a mother's feeling, but don't forget Shekinah's a mother as well. Her daughter, need I remind you, is a child, a child who needs her mum in her life. Surely Sarpa's family, his mum, can appreciate that. Well, the thing is, it doesn't help matters when Sarpa tells his family that actually he isn't eager to go to the States. I'm only going through with this because being with Shekinah is the most important thing to me, he says. And hearing this, hearing that her son would prefer to stay in Turkey, seems to immediately change Sarpa's mum's opinion of Shekinah. No, ama yoksa oğlumun tabii bir Türk kızıyla evlenip burada yaşamasını daha çok tercih ederdim. Look at her face. She's got a face that could make an onion cry. She she really isn't happy with Shekinah. But hold on a minute. Just to clarify, just to make sure I'm not getting my wires crossed. Isn't this the same family that were harping on about how untrustworthy Turkish women are? They're all liars, I believe they said. How quickly they've changed their tune. Now, for as immediately tense as the environment that supposed celebration now becomes, things get even worse when they begin asking Shekinah about her daughter. How does Sophie feel about your relationship with Sarpa, they ask. Sophie is so influenced by them, you know, because they're my family and she has five aunties. Shekinah starts to get visibly upset. Not only do her family not support the relationship, but she says they've also influenced my daughter. They've turned her against Sarpa, she says. Now, of course, given what happened, what Shekinah's sister experienced when she came to visit Sarpa and Shekinah, it's no real surprise that she was against this relationship. And ever since, Shekinah says, her relationship with all of her family has been strained. And ever since then, my mom and my sisters, they're not speaking to me. And that's been really difficult. Yeah, that's bad. The fact that they're no longer talking to each other is very bad. Look, I think this is actually a very important point. This isn't specific to Sarpa and Shekinah, right? This is life advice. If you have a loved one, right, and you're worried that they might be in an abusive or a controlling relationship, the worst thing to do is to cut off contact. You want to make sure communication is open, right? You want to make sure that they know if ever they need you, you're there for them. They can come back to you without feeling judged, without the whole item told you so that might come with it. Now, going back to this instance with Sarpa and Shekinah, to her credit, Sarpa's cousin does her best to try and assure Shekinah that she has a support system. You have a family right now, you see? I just feel bad because you don't deserve it because you're so wonderful. And... No, you don't deserve it. You're so wonderful. Yeah. They are being pretty great here, right? They're supporting her when she desperately needs it. They assure Shekinah that she doesn't deserve the treatment that her family are giving her. It's a heartwarming moment, but as usual for these two, the warm and fuzzy feelings don't last for too much longer. You see, later on that evening, in fact, one hour after the party, the production crew is hurriedly called to their home. And we see that Shekinah is packing her bags. She's completely distraught. I did my best. He just wants what he wants and he feels like he might not get it. So he spirals. We ripped out my hair extension. What? He ripped out her hair extensions? Wow. Now, we don't have footage of what happened, and Shekinah mentions Sarpa was spiralling, something she'll go on to explain in more detail in a bit, but Sarpa wants to make it very clear that he didn't hurt Shekinah. This is just an accident, a mix-up. He says. Yeah, I took the, her phone from here, and yeah, one of the extensions from here came out. I never harm her. I never touch her. 
is trying to make it sound like an accident. Now, look, I'm no expert on hair extensions, so I have no idea how much force is needed to actually pull one out of someone's hair. I'm definitely not a good judge for this, right? I can't judge it fairly. Maybe someone with a bit more experience of hair extensions can let me know down in the comments below. Is there any world where that could have been an accident? Like, my initial gut reaction here is, hair extensions or not, surely there's no justifiable reason for him to have been pulling at hair anyway. I don't know, but one thing is for sure, what happened is incredibly serious. Sarpa's sat there looking very shaken, and Shekinah just wants to get out of there. I mean, it's my birthday, her birthday to, to get what we get. Sapa sounds defeated. He knows what he's done is not only incredibly serious, but might just be the final straw. So is he apologetic? Does he get on his knees begging for forgiveness? No, no, not a chance. This is Sapa after all. He does wish her well, but in the most passive aggressive way that I've heard in a very long time. In your life, in your new life, in your life, in your part. That sounds like Sapa is calling it a day. Either that, or he knows that Shekinah has just called it a day. Take care of yourself, enjoy your new life, he says. And he just can't resist throwing in another little dig. He says to her, enjoy your LA parties. Remember, Sapa's very opposed to Shekinah going out to parties. She admitted that to her friends when they quizzed her about why she wasn't in the LA party scene anymore. And after she leaves his apartment, when they're in the car, Shekinah explains to the production crew how things spiralled so badly. What actually happened? He started in on me at the table saying, why don't you just let me buy this vanity? But I said, I don't want you to spend your money on a vanity I don't even like. So this relates back to the furniture shopping that we saw them doing in the last episode. Shekinah didn't like any of the furniture that was in the store. Given their financial situation, she said that buying it would be a waste of money. But Sapa, it seems, was desperate to buy it for her. Like, it's a weird argument. As Shekinah says herself, it's a stupid thing for them to be arguing about. But for whatever reason, it just kept escalating. And in private, on their way back home from the restaurant, it got worse. He was yelling at me in the car and saying he's changed his whole life for me. What have I done? What have I done? I haven't done anything for him. He's he had a good life before. He had a peaceful life. He was perfectly happy. Is the man deluded? She hasn't done anything for him. What? You mean, except moving to another continent? Leaving behind everything she knew? Going against her friends and her family for him? Like, sorry, I know people may say bad things when they're angry, but some things you just can't take back. And when they returned home, it seems, instead of taking time to cool down, things only got more heated. And then he came over and grabbed my phone, ripped my hair extension out, and I said, give me my phone back. And he says, what? I don't know where your phone is. So while he was grabbing her phone, in the process, he apparently ripped out her hair extensions. But then, to gaslight her, he then pretended like he didn't know where her phone was. Like, what, what on earth has just happened? How does he think he can grab her phone but then pretend he doesn't know where it is? It's, it's really bizarre, right? And Shekinah says that he did this to make her think that she was crazy. He was gaslighting her. But you do also have to ask the question, was his intention in hiding the phone to make sure she couldn't use it to get out of there? Now, when his gaslighting didn't work, Shekinah explains that Sapa then changed his tune. He went from anger to trying to charm her. Finally, he gave it back to me. He was like, come here, baby, come here. It's our birthday. Let me hug you. I was like, don't touch me. And so I started packing. Now, when his lovey-dovey, fluffy-fluffy bun-bun persona didn't work, Sapa went back to being angry again. He began to make threats, 
says Shekinah. He threatened me, saying, I won't ever see him again if I walk out of the door. And Shekinah's response to that seems to have been absolutely spot on. He goes, if you leave, you'll never see me again. And I was like, that's the point. <sighs> So stupid. Yeah, great answer. That is the point. Now, Shekinah's demeanour, both here in the car and also later on when she gets to her hotel room, is very interesting. We heard her say, so stupid, right? As if she's telling herself off. She's so stupid for believing him, for being with him. But back in the hotel room, it's clear she's still in a state of shock. She says she's numb and she needs time to process what's happened. And you can clearly see just how distraught she is. But it's at this point that she also gives us a little bit more context. Sarpa, she says, doesn't like who I've become. He kept saying, you've changed. You used to listen to me and now you don't listen to me. And he was saying, I want the old Shekinah back who used to listen to me in the beginning. Is that what this whole fight was really about? Was this all about control? I mean, what Shekinah's saying is true. This is a new Shekinah that we're seeing. It's a Shekinah who will do what she wants. If she wants to go and see Sarpa's ex, he can't stop her. If she doesn't like a vanity, she's not just going to let him buy one anyway. I mean, that is a far cry from the woman that used to let him weigh her every morning, used to let him dress her and even design a new nose for her face. There has been a change, a positive change in my opinion, but it's clearly a change that Sarpa doesn't like. Because I'm realizing certain things are not okay. You know, he doesn't like to be confronted or questioned. Or challenged at all. Look, from literally the first episode that we met Shekinah and Sarpa, people near and dear to her, her closest friends and family, have been warning her that this has all the hallmarks of a controlling relationship. Unfortunately, at the time, she didn't see that, but it feels like recently her eyes have been open to this fact. She's now begun to assert herself. She's pushing back, and Sarpa doesn't like that. So the question is, she's now at a crossroads. Will she continue down this new path that she's on, or will she fall back into line and once again defer to Sarpa's control? She's got a lot of reflecting and thinking to do, it seems. I just keep thinking about how it was earlier tonight. It was like such a good night. I'm just like, what's so wrong?